October is here, which means we're smack dab in the middle of zombie season. And what better way to celebrate than to talk about everyone's favorite flesh-eating monster movie franchise, Resident Evil. Nope, not that one. The one we could have had if they let zombie flick pioneer George Romero do his job. Hey guys, and welcome back to Rejected Movie Ideas, the show that would rather fantasize about long-dead Hollywood projects than watch another season of rednecks slog their way through the zombie apocalypse. And not only is The Walking Dead guilty of wasting hours of our time with what basically boils down to two good episodes a season, its success also caused Screen Gem executives to greenlight a sixth Resident Evil movie. And you know, that's great news for people who like Paul W.S. Anderson's post-Matrix-inspired monster mashes, but for the rest of us who actually like a bit more horror with our zombie movies, we left daydreaming with what could have been George Romero's version of the video game movie adaptation. It was the year 1996 when Capcom released a little survival horror game called Resident Evil. And unlike current sequels of the game, the original really was heavy in the survival aspect of the game. In zombie movie parlance, the game was a lot more Night of the Living Dead than World War Z, which made Capcom's search for a director to work on a Resident Evil 2 commercial a whole lot easier. In 1998, Capcom released a very cool, albeit very 90s, live-action commercial for Resident Evil 2. And although the commercial only aired in Japan, it eventually got seen by the right people back in Hollywood, who quickly commissioned a feature-length script for a Resident Evil movie. Following in the footsteps of the original game, Romero's adaptation would have taken place a lot more in the Spencer Mansion rather than the underground lab, and would have starred both Chris Redfield as well as Jill Valentine, both of whom are surprisingly missing from Anderson's movie in favor of absolutely no character from the game whatsoever. Now granted, Romero did take some liberties with the characters that probably would have pissed off a lot of the video game Puritans, mainly the fact that Chris Redfield was now a Native American and in a relationship with Jill. But still, the characters, the setting, and the tone from the original game were all there on the page, ready to become a suspenseful and gory Resident Evil film. So what happened? Well, this being Hollywood, the land of truly questionable decisions, studio heads passed on a horror script written by the godfather of zombie filmmaking in favor of a guy who was hot off the heels of murdering Kurt Russell's career. When asked about what the hell happened, Romero simply answers, the guy that runs the film production, it just wasn't the way he wanted to go. I don't think he knew anything about video games or anything else. Irritated, but unsurprised by the blatant display of Hollywood douchebaggery, the veteran filmmaker quickly moved on to revive his legendary Living Dead franchise with the very successful Land of the Dead. And as for the Resident Evil movie, the studio eventually brought in the aforementioned Paul W.S. Anderson, who replaced the lead special ops agents from the game with an amnesiac Mila Jovovich, changed the survival horror tone in favor of a more post-Matrix slash music video approach, and swapped the bloodthirsty tyrant with Michelle Rodriguez. Unsurprisingly, Romero remains unamused by the changes to this day. Frankly, and of course I have an axe to grind, I really didn't like the movies. <laughs> you and me both, man. Hey guys, hope you liked that episode. As a huge horror fan and lifelong fan of Night of the Living Dead, it was a personal favorite of mine. Make sure you subscribe to see more videos, like this video, comment on below. And if you want to see more of me, you can check out my channel, Practical Folks. That's about it. Be good people.